Hello, and welcome to our worship for Passion Sunday, focusing on what Jesus achieved through his death on the cross. We sing to start us off on this theme, Consider Christ, the source of our salvation, that he should take the penalty for me. The day Jesus died, everything was the wrong way round. The day Jesus died, it was dark in the middle of a bright day. Everything was the wrong way round. A friend is someone who sticks by when things are hard, as well as the times you're having fun. Well, the day Jesus died, his friends betrayed him, disowned him, ran away and let him down. Everything was the wrong way round. A judge's job is to let innocent people go free. Well, the day Jesus died, the judges listened to lies, ignored the truth and sentenced Jesus to death. Everything 
was the wrong way round. A soldier's job is to protect people who do good. The day Jesus died, soldiers arrested Jesus, hit him, made fun of him, took all his belongings and nailed him to the cross. Everything was the wrong way round. A cross was made to take someone's life. But the day Jesus died, it didn't take his life. Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Then he gave up his spirit. The judges, soldiers and cross didn't take Jesus' life. He gave himself. Everything was the wrong way round. That's what makes the day Jesus died good. God made everything the wrong way round on one day to put everything the right way round in eternity. Jesus took our place, dying the death our lack of love deserved, so that everyone who trusts him can take his place, living forever his perfect love earned. Jesus gave his life to fix the broken world. Jesus gave his life to save imperfect people. Jesus committed his spirit into the Father's hands so that we can be safe with God forever. The day Jesus died, everything was the wrong way round. To put everything the right way for eternity. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand, so let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew our right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, Grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to look at a video presenting one way of seeing what Jesus' death on the cross achieved after which our Bible reading is brought to us by Linda Stonia. The reading is taken from John, chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, 
it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honour him. The Son of Man must be lifted up. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come from, for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John chapter 12 and verse 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. One of the stories that may well be retold, not just on Tuesday's National Day of Reflection, but in years to come too, is of the heroic Chinese doctor Li Wei Liang. He'd shown great courage in one way at the start of the pandemic when, having developed a strong suspicion that seven of his patients had been affected by a virus, a virus that looked a bit like SARS, he warned his medical colleagues that they ought to wear appropriate PPE only to be denounced by the authorities for spreading false rumours which disturbed the social order. Before long, Dr. Lee himself had contracted COVID. In early February last year, he died of it, which is, as you'll know, highly unusual for someone who was only 34. Reports at the time suggested that his commitment to treating the sick had not just exposed him to the virus, but to an exceptionally high dose of it, which his body was unable to cope with. Over the years, I've often preached on Bible passages like the one we're looking at today, which speak of the need for a believer to be willing to sacrifice their life for the sake of others in the service of Christ. And though there have been parallels to draw, looking back to wartime and those who gave their life for the country, looking abroad to many living in the 21st century who are persecuted and even martyred for their faith. To be honest, it's felt hard to connect with our everyday experience. In the last year or so, though, we have heard countless stories of those who've been lost to COVID, a good few of whom, it's fair to say, have put themselves at far greater risk because of their service of others, including more than 230 NHS workers, many more carers, people who work in hospitality and stales too. We know how essential such people are to our lives and we honour their willingness to carry on serving us, which, tragic though it is, maybe helps us better understand and engage with what Jesus is teaching here. Even thus, those of us who are very familiar with the process of sowing seed probably don't at first realise the, the full power of the illustration that he chooses. Some may be the kind of committed gardener that nurtures the previous se season's crops to provide seeds for the new year. 
to others. The only seed we know comes in the little envelopes with a colour picture on the outside of what the contents should grow into. Either way, though, the seed we generally use feels as if it's been made to be put in the ground. I doubt that we shed a tear as we do so. But for most people through history, the seed they sow may very often be the meal that they could have eaten. In the UK's climate, many people think of spring as the happiest time of the year. But until very recently, it was the hardest as the reserves from the previous year's harvest began to run very low. And yet people knew that in order to avoid even worse problems down the line, they had to take some of the precious grain seed that remained and rather than use it to make bread to feed their hungry children, bury the seeds in the ground, never themselves to fill anybody's stomach. The reason they did it, well, since the introduction of farming at the time of the agrarian revolution, most civilizations have known that the grain of wheat's potential to feed anybody means that though in itself it would die, it would in time, God willing, if planted, bear much fruit in the form of a whole earful of grain to feed people the next year. And in the first place, Jesus is using this as a picture of the necessity of his own death. In the preceding verse, he has said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Son of Man being the title Jesus frequently used when referring to his own life and ministry. The glory of Jesus is partly displayed in his being raised from the dead, his ascension and his promised second coming. And some suggest that Jesus speaking about his death in this verse that we're focusing on this morning is only because you can't be resurrected if you don't die first. But in John's Gospel, Jesus seems to be saying more than that, that his glory is shown to the world in his death as well as in his resurrection and ascension and promised return. To some degree, the way we speak of a figure like Li Wei Liang or countless others who die for a cause, die in the service of others, reflects a certain honour, glory even, that we give to their deaths. Though in Jesus' case, there's even more to it than that. The illustration of the grain of wheat dying is quite a strong picture in this regard. See, if Li Wei Liang had made a last-minute recovery, that would have been even more wonderful. The good that he achieved would have happened even if he hadn't died. For the grain of wheat, though, the principle applies that you can't have your cake and eat it. It's only by being planted and by ceasing in itself to be able to feed a hungry stomach, by dying, that the seed grain can produce much fruit, the earful of corn that in time will be able to offer far, far more food value. And so Jesus is making clear that he isn't just being fruitful despite his death, nor is his death only of use in providing an appropriate low point to highlight the wonder of the resurrection. Now, his death in itself is the cause of much fruit. Other parts of the Bible are more explicit in seeing Jesus' death as a sacrifice for the sins of the world, of his dying in our place, dying the death that we deserved to bear God's punishment for our sins so that we didn't have to. All that's for another day. This verse we're focusing on this morning doesn't really hint at how Jesus' death on the cross achieves so much. But what is crystal clear from this powerful little illustration of a grain of wheat having to die is that Jesus' death is not just a necessary evil to be forgotten about as quickly as possible, but a key part of God's plan. Which is why we speak of celebrating the Lord's death whenever we have Holy Communion. Why we call the day of his dying Good Friday. 
There is one other important teaching that Jesus wants to highlight by this illustration of the grain of wheat dying, that this sets a pattern for his followers to emulate. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wool Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth, it dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And then verse 26. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Going back to where we began this last year, as we've clapped for carers... We've been honouring, well, in some cases, those willing to accept personal risk in the service of others, even though so far, thankfully, they've been relatively unscathed. In other cases, those who have paid a price, either with their physical health, their mental health, the stress that's put on their family, or in some cases even, through dying. Actually, the main thrust of Jesus' teaching here isn't in the first place addressed to those that we might call secular martyrs. But I wanted to include mention of them, both to honour what they've given, and also because they give a concrete 21st century example from among our own communities of the kind of self-sacrifice that Jesus is here more specifically asking of his followers, of you and of me. When he says, if anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Jesus' initial focus is almost certainly on those who face persecution, martyrdom even, for their faith. Many would say, sticking up your faith in Jesus, even in the most extreme situation of losing your life because of it, would be a futile gesture. Far better, they say, to live to fight another day. Deny your faith when challenged, but remain true to it privately. Jesus, though, warns that living your life in that way will mean losing it for eternity. Whoever loves his life loses it. But he then goes on to say, whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. One of the most memorable quotes from Christian writers of the second century was penned by a historian called Tertullian, who drew on the central image Jesus is using here in writing, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Whereas sometimes, if we're honest, we keep quiet about our faith just to avoid a mild disapproval which sadly means that the potential for our witness to sow a seed which could blossom into a fully-fledged faith in another person's life, in some circumstances at least, is lost. Thinking about what being willing to give our life for Christ or of others in the current context might mean as well. For those without particular skills uh, in a medical field or something like that, at times it might be right to volunteer, even at our own risk. Hopefully we're nearly past the time when those who are COVID vulnerable need to get others to assist them with shopping and other tasks outside the home. But if that scenario returns, the Christian who is less at personal risk is surely right to volunteer, even if we know that we ourselves are not completely immune. At other times, and for other people, self-sacrifice means something very different, obeying the rules and staying at home, even when we're longing to do something or to see our families. Most people will have no difficulty being vaccinated for our own protection. But even if we aren't quite convinced that we need it to protect ourselves, by having the jab, we, we reduce the chances of ourselves passing on the virus to more vulnerable people. For those in their 20s and 30s who are themselves healthy and feel that their personal risk could be lower than the risk of vaccine damage, well, I'm not sure that's a correct assessment, but even if it were, there would be good reason for the Christian to want to be vaccinated because of the way it protects others. For if we behave selfishly, 
in this or in any other challenge. We're warned, whoever lo loves his life will lose it. But at the same time, Jesus promises us, whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Tracy Holland is going to lead us in our intercessions, after which we sing in response to God's word, O oh Jesus, I have promised. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you this morning in prayer as we gather our thoughts on the needs of your people, your church, your world. We give thanks and praise to you for the promises you have made through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, to give salvation to all who seek it. Father, in you we put our trust in all aspects of our lives. In times of fear and anxiety, give us the strength to hold fast to our faith in you as our refuge and shield, and ultimately to live a life with peace of mind and calm in our hearts with you at the centre of it. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father God, today we pray for your church throughout the world, especially for clergy in their leadership, struggling to maintain regular church services and the outreach work in their community as a result of the COVID pandemic. In our church, we pray for Andrew, our wardens and our PCC members as they prepare to open our doors for corporate worship together. In sorrow, we pray for John and the Congregation of St. Peter's as they finalise the arrangements of the closure of their building. We give thanks for the many years in partnership together and pray for the, for the adjustment of the congregation to new church families, extending a heartfelt welcome to our brothers and sisters to St. Andrew's Church. Father God, we also pray for our Newcastle Deanery, for the Shaping for Mission team, and especially for our Vicar Andrew in his role as Rural Dean. Give them wisdom and guidance as they work to establish a sustainable mission for growth and development of discipleship, vocation and evangelism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we give thanks that our government is implementing a plan for our country to return to a more normal way of living. Whilst we look forward to spending quality time with each other, we remember those who wait in anticipation to return to work, but especially for the many who have lost their form of employment and fear for their financial future. We give thanks for the COVID vaccination programme. We pray for a rapid distribution around the world to save lives and restore the well-being of people and their communities. In our community, we give thanks for the return of regular attendance to education. Sadly, many young people have been adversely affected by the restrictions imposed by COVID, resulting in poor mental health. We pray for the work of the NHS and charities such as Younger Minds as they help to restore the minds and futures of our younger generation. Guide our government to seek and implement ways to finance this desperately needed work. Loving and compassionate Father, hear us as we pray for all those in need, especially for Derek Murphy, Nora Cooper, Pam Gotham and Jeff Oxborough, and for Dave Arnold and Christine Geratnam and their families as they mourn the loss of their mother Glory. Finally, we offer prayers for ourselves. In our Lent Bible study group, we have been learning about the relationship we can have with you now, our loving God. 
We don't have to sit and wait to experience your joy, your love, your peace. You are always there for us, waiting for us to speak to you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ, give us grace to grow in holiness, to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all and those we care for today and evermore. <laughs>